Right you guys, how are we and what is going on? Welcome back to another video. In today's video we're continuing in the fashion that we have done the first two videos of the day and that is to do with running. And if not, well, running in general, the top end speed of running. We're talking about sprinting, we're talking about the elite of the elite. And today we're talking about football players. Um, the video is titled The Five Fastest Players of NFL Combine History. And What's up everyone? This is Primetime. I've just clicked on it for the very first time. How did their careers turn out? Now I actually don't know who the five fastest players of NFL Combine history is. Do you? If you do, or if you want to guess, before I roll the intro, which is going to happen in about, well, 10 seconds, go down in the comment section below, pause the video, go down, type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and put your top five fastest players in NFL Combine history in your comment. Then scroll back up, press play, and see how you did. Um, personally, should, should I do that right now? I, th I probably should. Um, let's go uh, John Ross. There's really only three players that I can name quite comfortably. And that would be John Ross, Henry Ruggs, and Tyreek Hill. But apart from that, I've really got no clue. So let's go. I swear I like your style. Put you in Chanel cause it's just perfect for your smile. Girl, I swear for you I run the world, I run the miles. The way you look at me, I think I'm going insane. And today I will be discussing the five fastest players of NFL Combine history and how their careers turned out. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy this video because if the feedback is good, I will continue making videos like this and I'll buy an actual mic so that the sound quality will be much better for future videos. Before I start though, I want to point out that I am basing this video off of official electronic times from the Combine. So Deion Sanders? Unfortunately, players such as Paul Jackson and Deion Sanders will not be a part of this video. Two players are tied as the fifth and fourth fastest players in combine history, both with a 4-2-6 40-yard dash. I will be discussing Dre Archer first, since his time was more recent. Dre Archer played college football for Kent State, where he was mainly utilized as a returner oh, and my Lord. back his first two seasons, before being ruled ineligible for the 2018 oh. season due to academic reasons. He then had a much larger impact as a starting running back his last two seasons, where he earned first team all mac and consensus All-American honors as an all-purpose back and kick returner. He finished his college career with a total of 4,972 all-purpose yards before declaring for the 2014 NFL Draft. Dre Archer wowed Holy at the NFL shit. Combine with a 4-2-6 40-yard dash and was projected to be a second or third round pick, which held true at the draft where he ended up being selected in the third round as the 97th overall pick by the Pittsburgh Steelers. As a running back, no, wide receiver. Hmm. Preseason, Dre Archer made several big plays, such as a 46-yard reception against the Giants and a 40-yard reception against the Bills, which led many to have high hopes for him for the upcoming season. Once the season started, though, Dre Archer was sparingly used and did not see much playing time at all. In fact, after starting running back Livia Bell was injured for the playoffs, the Steelers decided to sign Ben Tate, a mediocre at best player, instead of relying on Archer. Dre Archer's only touch was that Antonio Brown that picked that ball up of the year, which actually happened to be in the wild card game, ended up being called back due to offensive holding. Overall, he finished his rookie year with a measly 40 rushing yards, 23 receiving yards, and 163 return yards. Hmm. In the 2015 season, Dre Archer was not used as a running back or a receiver, but he was used as a kick returner. <sighs> Even though he averaged an acceptable 25.3 yards per return, he struggled to put up any big numbers or touchdowns, with his longest return being only 38 yards. Hmm. Which yeah, that's, that's interesting, eh? 14 returns for a fair few yards. Longest being 38, you'd expect that to be up, you know, to the 50 mark. You definitely expect, oh no, okay, so 10, 10 of the returns were 20 plus. Almost there, two more yards, he would have had one in the 40 plus column. Only let him to be released after week eight. Dre Archer then signed with the Jets. Bro, if this guy is out of the league already, I am going to be super surprised. Very soon after, he was claimed off waivers by the Bills, but failed to even show up. Which marked the end of his short tenure in the NFL. Oh, what? As he makes a comeback anytime soon. Overall, while Dre Archer did have impressive speed, he neither had the strength, size, nor vision to succeed in the league. Jerome Mathis, the other player who ran a 4 2 6, played college football for Hampton University, where he was a wide receiver and kick returner. 
He averaged a touchdown every 4.4 receptions, had six kick return touchdowns, and had 4,541 all purpose yards. Sounded like that Dre needed reps at running back and needed a little bit of confidence instilled in him. Anyway. Just 35 games. Jerome Mathis declared for the 2005 NFL Draft, where he was drafted in the fourth round bit before my time. the 14th overall pick by the Houston Texans. As a rookie, he immediately made an impact as a kick returner. With 50 He's points, huge! 542 yards and two touchdowns, averaging 28.6 yards per return. <laughs> he also had one receiving touchdown. Because of his performance as a kick returner, Jerome Mathis was selected to the 2006 Pro Bowl. Nice! As a starting kick returner for the AFC and also made the All-Pro first team. During the Pro Bowl, however, Mathis fractured his left foot, which wasn't discovered until months later. He ended up missing six months because of this and only played in two games of the 2006 NFL season. He then only played three games in 2007, after which the Texans declined to offer him another contract. Mathis then signed with the Redskins, but was released after a short amount of time. Afterwards, he spent time playing in both the CFL and the AFL before his career ended. While his injury undoubtedly played a large role in Jerome Mathis' lack of success in the NFL following his rookie year, his character and off-field problems also contributed to the unwillingness of teams to offer him another chance. This included being cited for loose pit bulls, punching teammate Marcellus Rivers, and being accused of punching his pregnant girlfriend. Therefore, Jerome Mathis certainly had the potential to prosper in the league, as highlighted by his stellar rookie season. Mate, look at that speed, bro. His potential never being real. Four two six, and he looks about six foot two. two players are tied as third and second. Oh, CJ two K. Both of the four two four forty yard dash. I will be discussing Chris Johnson first, since his time was more recent. Chris Johnson, otherwise known as CJ two K, is unquestionably the most notable of all of these players. He played college football for East Carolina University, where he excelled at both kick returner and running back. He was selected as an all-conference USA first-team return specialist and second-team running back. So I'm pretty sure he's he one of his college career with a total of 6,993 all-purpose yards before entering the 2008 NFL Draft. I'm just thinking, we saw Jonathan Taylor get 6,000 yards, and that's like sixth on the all-time leading list for NCAA. If Chris Johnson got 6,000 in something, hang on, NCAA all-purpose yards leaders, he might be the all-purp, he might be, uh, he might be in the all-purpose yards list, but let's see, all-purpose, most all-purpose yards, holy shit, in a game, 578 by Emmett White, most all-purpose yards in a season, 3,250 by Barry Sanders for Oklahoma. CJ2K, okay, okay. Let's see some records. Okay, so he played, he played four seasons, which doesn't happen a lot. You know, a lot of these guys, a lot of these top, top fellas, they forego that senior season. So here we go. 47 games. Okay, it was kick return touchdowns that put him up there. 2,982, uh, 2,982 rushing yards, 1,296 receiving yards, and 2,715 kick return yards. So, basically, he was a problem all over the field. Before the combine, Chris Johnson was projected to be a second to third round pick. But after running a 4-2-4, he ended up being drafted in the first round as the 24th overall pick by the Tennessee Titans. Nice. Chris Johnson played extremely well his rookie season. And finished the season with over 1,200 rushing yards and had 10 total touchdowns. He was second in Rookie of the Year voting and was elected to the Pro Bowl. The next season was when the nickname CJ2K was born. Chris Johnson had an absolute... Pretty sure he became one of only six players at the time to run for 2,000 rushing yards in a season. Monster of a year, with performances that included 197 rushing yards against the Texans and 228 rushing yards against the Jags. He became one of seven players to ever rush for 2,000 yards in a single season. And he broke Marshall Falk's record seven players. for most scrimmage yards in a season. And he's got it. Chris Johnson is now a member of the 2,000-yard rushing club. He joins an elite group of running backs. To nobody's wow. surprise, he was named the NFL Offensive Player of the Year and was elected to a second Pro Bowl. While not as impressive as his 2,000-yard season, 
Chris Johnson again put up respectable numbers in his third season with 1,364 rushing yards and 11 rushing touchdowns. He was selected to his third and last Pro Bowl. Chris Johnson rushed for three more 1,000-yard seasons before being released by the Titans. He then signed with the Jets for the 2014 season, but finished with only 663 yards and one touchdown. Oh, mate. For the I'll tell you what, if I was following it at, at that time, I would have absolutely loved to see how he went that year for the Jets after being dropped. You know, I'm the kind of guy that would, would still have faith, you know, for a guy that for a guy that's so fast, so naturally fast, and ran for six 1,000-yard seasons, I'd, I'd feel like he's still got it, you know what I mean? I'd feel like, nah, it doesn't matter how old this guy is, I'm still going to back him. That's just the kind of guy I am. But let's see how it ended. Teen season, Chris Johnson signed with the Cardinals and looked much better than he did with the Jets with several 100-yard rushing games. In the Week 12 game against the 49ers, nice. though, he fractured his tibia, which ended his season. Chris Johnson continued to be plagued with injuries the next two years with the Cardinals before finally signing a one-day contract and retiring as a Titan. While not quite at the Hall of Fame level, Chris Johnson still had a remarkable career, and his 2,000-yard season will go down as one of the best ever. Absolutely. Really? After all that, he's not at the Hall of Fame level. See, that sucks, doesn't it? I have actually reacted to Chris Johnson's story before, so if you have watched that and you see this, I apologize if I've forgotten anything, but it is what it is. Rondell Menendez. Rondell Menendez played college football for Eastern Rondell Kentucky Minendez. University, where he had a mediocre first two seasons, but managed to finish strong his last two years with consecutive 1,000-yard seasons, including a school record 280 receiving yards in one game. Menendez ran a 4-2-4 40-yard dash in the 1999 NFL Combine, the first NFL Combine with electronic timing for the 40-yard dash. He actually ran a 4-1-9 on his first attempt, but he had to run it again because officials believed he was wearing track shoes. Rondo Menendez was drafted in the 7th round as the 247th overall pick by the Atlanta Falcons. In his rookie year preseason, Menendez showed that he was a competent punt returner, and as a result, was nice. essentially a lock for one of 53 roster spots. Yeah, good luck. In the final preseason game against the Bengals, Menendez wasn't getting any playing time, so he asked the coach to put him in. Keep in mind that at this point, he didn't really need to prove himself, as the coaches did not plan on cutting him. The coach finally gave in to Menendez's request and let him return a putt. This decision will cost him his career. Fuck, you're kidding me, mate. You are absolutely kidding me. What the hell happened? As he was positioning himself to haul in the punt, a Bengals player hit Menendez's knee. Menendez tore his meniscus, and the Falcons cut him. That was Sproles. <laughs> rosters of the Dolphins, Colts, Redskins, and Eagles, but he never felt the same after the injury, and no team would take the chances on playing him. His mother also became sick around this time, so Menendez took some time off to take care of her. When he returned, Menendez joined NFL Europe. I felt so out of shape that he decided to officially retire and dash any hope of a comeback. One can only wonder how his career would have turned out if he had decided to sit out the preseason game instead of asking to play. I'm sure most of you know the fastest player of NFL combine history. If you don't, well, it's wide receiver John Ross with a 4-2-2. John Ross played college football for the University of Washington. In his first two years, he played as a receiver, returner, and cornerback. He, <laughs> he just about walked in there. Season due to a torn ACL. So light on his feet. To accumulate 1,122 receiving yards and 17 receiving touchdowns. He was named second team All American honors and first team All Pac 12. Ross forewent his senior season to declare for the 2017 NFL draft. That's John ridiculous. Ross was projected to be a first round pick, and this held true at the draft as he was selected in the first round, ninth overall, by the Cincinnati Bengals. In the preseason, John Ross was able to show his speed and make several flashy plays. Yeah. But on his first touch in the regular season, he fumbled the ball. Oh, Unlike fellow oh, rookie fuck. career Hunt, who also fumbled on his first carry, John Ross was benched for the rest of the season, even when he wasn't injured. During his second season, John Ross was able to effectively contribute to the Bengals' offense. Even though he only amassed 210 receiving yards, Ross developed into a legitimate scoring threat, catching seven touchdowns and scoring on one out of every three receptions. John Ross has clearly improved from his rookie year. 
the Bengals have began to rely on him more and more. Awesome. Now on the hinge of his third season, John Ross has nowhere to go but up. With AJ Green expected to miss several weeks due to injury, John Ross is poised to have a much bigger role and could potentially put up staggering numbers this coming season. Personally, I am excited to see how John Ross will thrive under a new system, and I hope the Bengals will properly utilize Ross's skill set. Well, my friend. Hmm. Fuck, I love this song. But we're not listening to music right now. Although that is something I could listen to on this channel. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed that video. That was just a little bit of fun. Continuing in the, you know, speed and the running sort of fashion. We're done with that now. Absolutely finished. But what I will say, guys, is that up next, we're back into some football. And the two players we're looking at first, well, three players, actually, is Derek Henry, DK Metcalf, and the legendary 513-yard performance by Reggie Bush. And with that being said, as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.